Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, man, we got two other huge topics here. Uh, we can do this for a couple minutes. I'm just... I'm curious. Has your um, this was like a this was like a major litmus test, I think, for a lot of like media coverage was uh, like the Rittenhouse stuff. Um, do you do you do you still stand by? Do you feel like I feel like when I watched the Young Turks and a lot of other people, there were a lot of insane statements coming out about how like conservatives love to kill people. Conservatives are always looking to kill people. They can't wait to kill. They're constantly looking to kill people. Get away from it. Like, do you think that like this type of rhetoric or this discussion around uh, what were like largely violent riots that were largely spurred, I think, by like bad media coverage of the um, of the uh, uh, the original Kenosha shooting of. Um, oh, God, what was the name of the guy? Um, they got shot in the back several like, times. Yeah. Yeah. It, it like the, the whole Rittenhouse saga to me was Jacob Blake gets shot and there's bad coverage in the media about it, making it seem like he was just an innocent guy getting in the car to drive away. And then riots happen in Kenosha that get bad media coverage. You've got the CNN, uh, the infamous CNN coverage of, you know, fiery protests, but mostly peaceful in the background. Um, then you've got Rittenhouse, you know, goes and does his thing. And then we get more bad coverage of that, in my opinion. I think a lot of the facts get misrepresented there in a lot of left-leaning media. And it just feels like we're on this never-ending train of stoking the fires of resentment, hatred, on top of misinformation and bad claims. And then at the end of the day, we all walk away feeling like we've done something good when we're just like kind of like preaching basically misinformation to the audience and everything. Yeah. So, no, I, I don't uh, back away from anything I said. Uh, so, um, but again, I, I'm not a standard leftist, right? So it's, and you're not either, right? Uh -huh. You're not a standard anything, right? So for example, you, you, you know, you support a uh, Democrat and the, what I would call the establishment of Democrats, but you have this written house opinion, which is a little out of left field, right? Uh, or maybe right field. Uh, and so that, and I, like I said at the beginning, I respect you for that. That's genuine. It's, it's unique, et cetera. Right. So on, on written house. Yeah, there's absolutely no reason to go with a weapon uh, to that protest um, or or riot. Like if you're right and it's a terrible riot, and in a lot of ways that it was. So what I it's like, so I wouldn't have put up the Chiron saying peaceful protests as the fires are going on in the back. No, of course there was some uh, fires, there was vandalism, there was danger. There's no question about that, right? You can't deny reality. Now, why would I grab a weapon and go in the middle of that? It doesn't make any sense. It's not even his community. <clears throat> Do you, so, so the obvious, well, I mean, it was his community, but like the obvious comparison would be like the rooftop Koreans during like the Rodney King riots in LA. Like, do you think that nobody's, does anybody in the United States have any sort of moral right to defend communities that feel attached to? Or do you think that's no, just something no, no, that- No, 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 Steven. So I, I, I think it's, those are two very, very different things. Look, you got a store, you worked your ass off for it. My dad's an immigrant, uh, he worked his ass off. He uh, built his own business brick by brick. And you wanna protect that. I hear you brothers and sisters. Okay, I got you. And, and, and these days there's a lot of crime and you wanna protect your family? Absolutely, I get it, okay? But he didn't live there. I mean, they cr cross state lines. He I don't was, know if just real quick, because I lived in Nebraska. He crossed, it was a 15 minute drive. He lived like 15 minutes away. And when, we, when you live in, I lived in Omaha. There's a lot of towns that you drive out to that you're like part of those communities. A lot of people in council blocks go to. Why? Because like, he, why he, go there? Well, why? Be, I mean, like, people don't talk about it, but like, um, I, like the day before the Rittenhouse thing happened, there was that older guy, Robert Cobb. His business had literally been burned to the ground. It was being arsoned. And I think he was running around with a fire extinguisher trying to put it out. And, and people- And what was, what was Rittenhouse gonna do? Was he gonna sit there and shoot everybody that came by? I mean, well, he, I mean, he shot weapon? three people. I mean, what do you mean? That's, I mean, what do you mean? Yeah, but that's my point. He went there to go shoot. <clears throat> in my opinion, he went there, not specifically like in my mind, premeditated, I'm going to go and murder some people on the left and I'm going to feel great. No. Sure, but right? like we but, the, but, but I'm then when you go look with at the weapon mm -hmm. and if and if there's any kind of provocation, I might get to use it. Yeah, but I mean we can say that, but when you look at the evidence, there's just no yeah. evidence. There's nothing that supports that. No, that's 100%. Look, he goes there with a weapon, mm -hmm. he goes to provoke, then why did he shoot the first guy? He okay. shot the first look, guy because the first guy was chasing him in a parking lot. He'd already made threats earlier, that's on camera, and he was he was lunging for Rittenhouse's rifle after a guy behind him had fired a shot with his pistol after Rittenhouse turned around to see where the noise is coming from. So, but Steven, I, I think that you're proving my point, which is- I don't think so at all. I think it was- well, a, it was yeah, go ahead. Let me explain, let go me ahead. explain. So you go into this dangerous, what you think is a dangerous situation, you go in there with a weapon, 
then you hear a shot. That's true. There was a shot. He heard it. He didn't see where the shot was coming from. He just turned around and shot the guy. He turned around and shot a guy that's that was incredibly lunging. Incredibly reckless. He, no, no, it wasn't re- reckless. It wasn't reckless at all because he only shot the guy that was lunging for him, trying to grab his rifle. This is indisputable on video. The guy so, was wait, chasing wait, him wait, down. Steve, he turned around. He was lunging. Can I come to your yeah. house? Mm-hmm. Can I come to your house with a weapon and then if you grab for it, I get to shoot you? If probably, yeah. If you were in that's my house, crazy. not you hold on, wait, 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 wait. If you're if you come to my house and you have a weapon on you and we get into an altercation, I'm gonna grab that gun from you. Of course, you have a right to defend yourself, especially well, if I was twice your size. Well, I house with a weapon in the first place. What you am should, I doing well, there? Hold on, hold on. You shouldn't be in my house with a weapon because I'm on private property. The city of Kenosha was not private property. Rittenhouse had just as much a right to be there as any other protester did. So, listen, here, I'll give you an analogy. January 6th. I'm very upset about it. I don't like what happened there at all. I think they were trying to undermine our democracy. If I went in there with an AR-15 or any kind of weapon and I looked for a threat, I'd definitely find one, and then I'd get to kill everybody that I thought was a threat. I mean, that guy you say is lunging for his weapon. It, from what I saw, that guy's trouble. I get it. He was troubled, I should say. The guy who got the first guy who got killed, right? And so he goes. Maybe he went looking for trouble too. I don't know, right? But he threw a plastic bag that had plastic bottles in it. Wait, 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 so, wait. The plastic bag had Rittenhouse didn't even see the plastic bag. The that's issue my was point. no, no. But the issue is Rittenhouse was running away. This guy was chasing him, and when Rittenhouse turned around with an assault rifle, the guy went to grab the rifle from him. No, that's no, a pretty Steven, clear cut. Follow, like, <laughs> Stephen, if we follow, and then he got hit with a it, like, then he shoots and kills someone. Mm-hmm. Then he's running through the crowd. He's made the situation ten thousand times more. He's dangerous. not making this. He's running so, away from. The, he's running to the cops to turn himself in, which is crowd, exactly what he should be. The crowd is everywhere. The crowd is everywhere. He's running through the crowd, and then somebody sees that he shot someone. And they like they go after him with a skateboard, which I wouldn't have done, right? And but now he shoots and kills the guy with a skateboard. Yeah, because the guy's trying to assault him with a skateboard. If he had a bat, we'd say the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Look, a couple of things. Everybody's (laughs) different. Everybody's different, right? Yeah. So I get it. Some people will be scared, and if you get hit with a skateboard, you think, "All right, I'm going to murder that guy." For me, I get hit with a skateboard. I don't shoot the other guy. Jank, if, if, if somebody hits you with a skateboard in the face, there's like a 20% chance that you die. A skateboard? Uh, okay, Skateboards I'll are big things. Okay, that's great that you would, but I wouldn't compel a 17 year old to take that chance to move them on. Especially, on skateboard. especially skateboard. What, what the people that beat that one dude within an inch of his life, Robert Cobb, the day before, that everybody that went to this protest, they'd all seen videos of that. That's why people went to the riots the second Steven, day. That guy Steven. got beat to an inch of his life with bare fists. Steven, if you say, hey, listen, I see an altercation on the subway, the bus, the street, and I'm going to go protect not even a family member, but a random woman walking by, working class person, and they're, they're getting picked on, and I happen to see it, and you jump in, I got you. I got you, okay? And I actually appreciate you, right? But you make an active decision to drive into what you think is a riot and a dangerous situation with a weapon, and then you get freaked out by the plastic bag and a shot you didn't see and a skateboard, and you kill two people. That's on you, brother. You never should have gone there in the first place. You were looking for trouble, and then you found it, and then you cry like you're a victim? Oh, the pro- hell well, no. The, no and well, Steven, the problem here, yeah. so, sorry, one more thing. Go for it. The problem here is that if we follow your way of thinking about it, mm-hmm. and you tell me otherwise, of course, so I don't want to put words in your mouth, but if we, I think if we follow that way of thinking, then everybody's going to grab a weapon, they're all going to be in the streets, and the minute anybody looks kind of funny at you or throws a bag or... Or you hear something that's loud, or you, or there's a guy with a skateboard. We're boom, 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 boom. We're shooting each other to no end, to no end. That's why stand your ground is a disaster. And wherever they pass stand your ground laws, you have more homicides every time. So if you have videos coming out of people who are losing their businesses, who are getting beaten by people on the street, who are rioting in a city, the next day, people are going to show up to defend that town. Like, we live in the United States. Whether we like guns or we don't, that's the reality of it. Rittenhouse had more of a right to be there than any of the rioters that were there after dark, that were setting things on fire, that were causing... He had just as much as right to be there, if not more than any other person. And the United States, you are allowed to carry a weapon on you as well. The idea that he was shooting Rosenbaum because he threw a bag at him, that's just not true. We can watch the videos a million times. Rosenbaum was already getting violent before in the night. There is no video of 
Rittenhouse provoking anybody ever. There is video of Rosenbaum talking to people, using the N-word, saying, I'm gonna fuck somebody up. He was the one that was chasing Rittenhouse for like 20 meters through a car park before he finally, Rittenhouse finally turned and shot him. And then the other guy was charging with a skateboard to hit him. Uh, Grosscourt's charging with a pistol to shoot and kill him, and he got shot, his arm got shot. Um, I, I just, I don't see the wild chain of events where it's like, oh my God, since Rittenhouse was allowed to shoot a guy that was charging him for 20 meters and trying to grab his rifle, and then he shot another guy that went to attack him with a skateboard. Like, yeah, I mean, in the United States, with a guy with an AR-15, that's about what I would expect to happen. And I mean, we're a year or two later. It's not like there's been a, a, a deluge of shootings of innocent skaters now by young boys with AR-15. So, I mean, it doesn't seem like the landscape changed very much. No, no. So, Stephen, look, there, there's a couple of things here. Uh, so, number one, um, the jury gets to decide whatever they decide. And mm -hmm. so if they decided, hey, you know what, that was enough of a self-defense, okay, that's that's what the jury decided. So I'm telling you my perspective on it, and and I get that you might technically get, get away with it if it's a skateboard and you felt, oh, my God, the skateboard's a little dangerous, and the guy lunging at me, lunge, you know how many guys have lunged at me in my life? If I had killed all of them, I'd have killed like 20, 40 guys, okay? So, but, so there's the, hey, should he be guilty? That's up to the jury. There's, should he have done that? And I think that's crazy that he went there. He definitely should not have done that. And then, so I'm gonna ask you, so do you think that 10 guys, 100 guys, I don't know, 200 guys with weapons should have gone to January 6th, left-wingers, and said, all right, uh, we're here to protect the peace. I mean, this isn't just our community, this is our nation. And it looks like you guys are here to do a coup we're here, okay? There's 85 of us with AR-15s. What do you think would have happened? Uh, I, I mean, I don't know how many people there had weapons. It's based on the, what was the name of the crazy Proud Boys or whatever? It sounds like there, there might have been more guns than that already on the premises. No, but um, there was only guns on one but, side. If there was guns on both sides, what do you think would have happened on January 6th? I mean, there were police officers there with firearms that showed up, right? It's not like there was a mass shootout. The police officers let right-wingers do anything they want. They let them no, walk. No, they absolutely did not. If those guys were black, they would have gotten slaughtered. If those guys were Muslims, it would have been if that's if that's true, then history. we would have seen thousands or tens of thousands of black people killed during the BLM riots, but that didn't happen, right? I don't think black. Wait, they, did they bum rush the Capitol? Did they threaten <laughs> to murder Mike Pence? And no, Nancy but they Pelosi? burned down police stations, cars, state houses. Uh, I, we saw in Kenosha. A lot Not of them that got many. Shot. There were millions of people protesting. Not for for your statement that police officers are looking to indiscriminately kill black people? No. I did absolutely. not say that. Well, I did not in, say that. In one of your it videos, wouldn't be indiscriminate. Well, hold on. In it one of your videos, you said that if you walked up to a car with a rifle as a black person, you would get immediately killed. And you're making it sound like if black people would have shown up for January 6th, they would have gotten killed. Um, I mean, yeah, there was a lot of yes. there was a yes. lot of rioting for the BLM stuff. It's not like that many people got killed by the cops. So I think that the idea that cops are just looking to kill black people or black people are going to get killed for rioting more than no, white people, no, no, no. I think we would have saw a lot more death during the BLM riots if that was the case. Yeah, let's not put words in each other's mouths, me included, right? So I, I hear you, but I, I'm not saying indiscriminately, I'm not saying cops are looking to kill black people. I'm just saying if thousands of black people or Muslim people were bum rushing cops who were trying to protect powerful people like our Congress people, tons of them would have gotten shot. And, and we can disagree on that, that's okay. You think, no, the cops would have just let them walk in like they did with the white right wingers? Maybe, maybe, but I doubt it. Okay, but but you but you didn't answer the core question. Mm -hmm. If a whole bunch of left wingers had gone there with weapons, do you think that would have been a good idea? No, I generally, from all the data I've seen, the more guns in an area, usually the more fucked up shit is going to be. Always, <laughs> like okay, great. That's just statistically, but that uh, that's up against our Second Amendment rights as Americans, right? I would almost always compel people to, but I mean, I'm also wealthy. I would compel people to leave your property if you want. When I was poor uh, in college, I probably would have killed somebody if they tried to steal my shit if I had the opportunity to see it, because it's that's your lifetime's worth of shit that you put into buying stuff that you have. So you know, like if black people had the ability to defend themselves during the the Tulsa race riots, during the Black Wall Street being burnt down um, for the Koreans that defended their communities, for the Black Panthers in California that felt the need to defend their communities with rifles. Um, I mean, if minority communities or if any community wants to take up arms and defend their community, in the United States, you have the right to do that. And if I was going to come down on any side in a conflict there where people start getting killed, I would always come down on the rioters first. For Kenosha, the people that were primarily at fault were the people that were there after dark that were setting shit on fire. Those are the people who have the primary responsibility for everything that happened. As much as we talk about showing up to to a riot with a gun and how irresponsible this gross courts the guy that got his you know bicep shut off he showed up with a gun he almost used it on uh rittenhouse right um so i mean yeah well I, by I, the way two yeah. things about that 
Number one, he didn't. So apparently you could show restraint, even though he got shot. Uh, and number two, he shouldn't have shown up with a gun either. Here, I'll get, look, my last thing on this is, yeah. I'll give you the most extreme example. So you remember Charlottesville, of course, they, uh, the Nazis chant that Jews will not replace us. Mm -hmm. Now, would anybody begrudge uh, 10, 20 Jewish guys going in there with weapons and going, no, you're not going to chant this stuff in our community? Well, I mean, that's like the guys that are, you could least begrudge. I mean, these guys are literal goddamn Nazis, and they're chanting against the Jews while carrying torches, right? But if those 10 or 20 Jewish guys asked me, I'd say, I love you, brothers and sisters, and I love your strength, and I love your attitude, but don't go. Because it's guaranteed that people are going to die if you go, okay? So, and some of them might be you, some of them might be the other guys, but I don't want anyone to die. But... To your point of like, oh, me saying, oh, Republicans want violence uh, from time to time. Oh, that's crazy. No, they're just like us. No, there's polling. 28% of Republicans say that it, it's time for violence. So that's a giant number. And that it is, is but I mean, for Charlottesville, at, as hateful as that right was, they weren't destroying the city. I think that's a key component that like, not to mention, and for Kenosha, that city was being destroyed off of misinformation reported about the Jacob Blake shooting. And there were videos of like people getting attacked, of car dealerships being set on fire. It just seems like there's remarkably little empathy for the people whose community, if you go to Kenosha today, if you go downtown, there's still shit that's boarded up that has never opened again as a result of those riots. Um, and people are just fixated on, on the people that were, I mean, as shitty as it is, defending their community against who they perceived as outsiders that were coming just to destroy it. But. Yeah, so, look, I keep saying last thing because we're so out sure, of time. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, sorry, okay, yeah, go one, for it. One more last thing, one more last thing. So, to that point, Stephen, mm -hmm. so, some people say, hey, riots are the voice of the unheard. And I hear that, and that's a fair point, but by the way, you could maybe make that argument about January 6th, too. And so that's a different, very long conversation, okay? But that, to me, does not excuse going and setting a, a, a building on fire. No excuse. So, I'm not sure. excusing that 1%. Now, but if you think it was just because of, like, um, bad reporting on one case, I, I don't think you even think that, right? You know the context is— Well, the Kenosha the riots happen of, because of the Jacob Blake misreporting, what, A to B, one, a direct so line. So you know the context of tons and tons of uh, unarmed black guys being shot uh, by cops in this country. No, there are not tons and them. tons of unarmed black guys being shot by cops. All right. Country. Okay. So you don't agree with that. Okay, fine. Well, how many, uh, I, well, how but, many do you think a year get shot? How many unarmed black guys are getting shot by cops? Okay, uh, okay Stephen. Okay. Let me, let me finish the point. <laughs> okay. We'll wrap up. It, the okay, number's but, like 12, but yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right. So if you look, I think that if you say to all black people in this country, you're all telling us you've been abused by cops, whether it's to the extreme of being shot or pulled over or arrested or something smaller. You've been abused, all of you, tens of millions of you say that, and they, you've been saying it for 100 years straight, and then we turn around and go, we don't believe you. I think that's deeply offensive. I think it doesn't make sense. I think it's ridiculous. So that's the context in which that riot happens. It doesn't excuse the riot. And by the way, the misreporting, yeah, Okay, it turns out he had a knife, but they did shoot him in the back seven times. Because he was There's... about to drive off with abducted children. <laughs> That's a really no, important he's part. He's not a good guy. He's not he a good guy. He was the worst guy. Yeah, but I'm saying that, like, but he was about to. That doesn't mean you shoot him in the back. There's other solutions other they than. They already tased him twice. Weapon, shoot a guy in the back. They didn't just show up. They were wrestling with the outside of the house. They tried to wrestle on the ground multiple times. They no, no, tased I the mean guy twice. Written house for showing up. Okay, so. <laughs> so, look. Mm -hmm. I think that this whole thing, the Second Amendment, I got a right to bring weapons. Everybody's going to bring weapons and we're all going to kill each other. I think it's a disastrous idea. And anyone who right wing or left wing. And by the way, Stephen, we've fought back against any kind of violence, including from our side. Even things like uh, that uh, Riley Gaines, I think, the swimmer, she goes and gives a speech at some college and then the leftists surround the room that she's in and won't let her out and she's afraid for her, her safety cops won't let her out because they're afraid for her safety what are you guys doing 
to be a progressive is to believe in nonviolence. Sure. We don't do those thug tactics, okay? Sure, but I will so, say, your guys' coverage of the Michael Reinhold guy was a lot different, and I think that was a shooting that was clearly in the wrong. He was stalking a dude for hours, chased him across the street, and shot him in the face, and then ran away, and they gave interviews to Vice, and you guys were comparing that to like, oh, well, if Rittenhouse could kill the one guy that was chasing him, this guy's killing should have been just as supported. Um, I don't know, I, like, when, when you build up this world of, like, alternative fact reporting over and over and over, over and over and over again like it, it's not surprising to me that after a while you've got people on the right and left that just live in totally different worlds so people on the left are like of course we're gonna go riot and burn down cities hundreds or thousands of people every year are getting indiscriminately killed by the cops and then people on the right are like i don't know why you guys are burning down anything um we live in a totally different fact world where all of your stuff is misreported where people like and then like even like uh, you know like the rittenhouse killings are being compared to like brianna taylor which is actually a truly tragic case where a woman died for no reasons for we're at best the cops were serving a not great warrant, and at worst, they shouldn't have even been there. And you got people, and you got people comparing like Brianna Taylor um, and Philando uh, Castile, the uh, black guy who got shot and killed in his car because the cops smelled weed, um, are comparing this to like the Rittenhouse killings and stuff. And it's like, geez, when all of it gets thrown together, uh, it just it feels like it's easy to take none of it seriously, and and that's the kind of thing that's frustrating to me. All right, I hear you, but I, I, I again, we don't agree, and, and I, I think that uh, this this fetish of guns uh drives way more violence it's an empirical fact uh the more guns we have the more homicides there are the more suicides there are uh the more uh, tension we have in the country the more we distrust each other the more fearful we are and the more we strike out against one another and 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 shoot and kill and what we're trying to do on the young turks is to to end all that stuff uh, you, you know the right wing they'll never listen but for the left wing, we try super hard to make sure that there are no riots, there's no violence, there's no threats. Uh, that's not what Martin Luther King stood for or Nelson Mandela or Mahatma Gandhi. And we remind our audience of that day in and day out. We probably do it more than any other show. Okay. Um, I, there's anything here we go back and forth for hours for, but uh, I know, I'll respect your time. We're already 20 minutes over. So do you have any final closing words or thoughts, remarks or anything? Or? I appreciate that, Destiny. All right, bye. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed.